an $11 billion price tag for just 23 kilometers of railway. That's the staggering cost of the Sydney Metro. Western Sydney Airport Line, a project designed to be the lifeblood of a brand new multi-billion dollar international airport and a futuristic city called the Aerotropolis. This mega build is a showcase of Australian engineering, a transport spine that will connect a region of millions. But this state-of-the-art metro line is already facing a critical failure. It won't be ready for the airport's grand opening. How can a project this vital miss its own deadline? And is this massive gamble on the future of Western Sydney destined to succeed? To understand this story, you have to go back decades, long before a single shovel hit the dirt. The debate over where to build Sydney's second airport has been a political hot potato since the 1940s. For over 70 years, governments argued, commissioned studies, and then delayed, considering sites all over the region. Finally, in 2014, the federal government committed to the site at Badgeries Creek. But as planners drew up the blueprints, they were haunted by the ghost of Sydney's first airport rail link. Opened for the 2000 Olympics, that line was a public-private partnership that collapsed into bankruptcy just one year later, because the passenger numbers it was banking on never showed up. That failure cost taxpayers a fortune and taught a painful lesson. So to avoid repeating history, the government decided this new airport metro would be fully funded by the taxpayer, an $11 billion bet that the passengers and an entire city would eventually come. But that decision created a whole new set of challenges for the engineers on the ground. So, with the money secured, what did it actually take to build this connection? The answer lies in two massive parallel operations, one deep beneath the earth and one soaring high above it. Let's start underground. The project required two separate sets of twin tunnels, a 4.3-kilometre northern section running from the interchange at St Mary's to Orchard Hills, and a longer 5.5-kilometre southern section diving underground from the airport business park to the new city of Bradfield. To carve these tunnels through western Sydney's tough sandstone and shale, engineers deployed four colossal tunnel boring machines, or TBMS. These weren't just drills, they were 1,000-ton mobile factories, each given a name to honour a trailblazing Australian woman. Catherine and Marlene for the northern tunnels, and Eileen and Peggy for the southern ones. Each of these mechanical giants weighed a staggering 1,066 tons, which is almost the exact same weight as one of Sydney's iconic freshwater-class Manly ferries. And at around 120 metres long, each TBM was the same length as the massive main cavern of the Barangaroo Cutaway, Sydney's huge underground cultural space. Working around the clock, seven days a week, these machines ground their way forward at an average speed of 120 metres per week. As the huge spinning cutter head at the front chewed through the rock, the body of the machine followed right behind, automatically installing nearly 70,000 curved precast concrete segments to form the permanent waterproof tunnel lining. Each of these concrete segments weighs about four tons on its own. Over just 13 months, these four TBMs excavated more than 1.86 million tons of rock and soil. It's a number so big, it's hard to picture. But imagine you could take all that excavated earth, you could fill the entire 75,000 cubic metre Barangaroo cutaway space not once, not twice, but more than 10 times over. The sheer scale of this underground operation is mind-boggling, but what was happening on the surface was just as impressive. While half the project was burrowing deep underground, the other half was being lifted into the sky. A huge 3.2 kilometre section of the line is carried on a series of elevated viaducts, lifting the metro over major obstacles like the historic Warragamba water pipelines, Blacksland Creek and Luddenham Road. This wasn't a simple bridge, it was an exercise in precision, heavy lift engineering. The construction team used a custom-built 110-ton temporary beam and a massive 300-ton crane to lift and stitch the structure together, piece by giant piece. The entire structure is supported by 84 towering concrete piers, some standing over 15 metres tall. That's about a quarter of the height of the Sydney Opera House sails. Resting on these piers are 1,101 precast concrete segments, each weighing up to 65 tonnes. The total length of this viaduct structure is nearly three times the entire length of the Sydney Harbour Bridge, which itself is over a kilometre long. 
But the most incredible fact is what holds it all together. An unbelievable 1,108 kilometers of high tensile steel cable was threaded through ducts inside those concrete segments and then pulled tight, locking the entire structure into one solid beam. That's enough steel cable to stretch from Sydney all the way to Melbourne, with hundreds of kilometers left over. This incredible sky-high railway will carry passengers to six brand new stations, each with its own unique story. The six new stations along the line are designed to be more than just places to catch a train. They are meant to be architectural gateways to the new region, which is being called the Western Parkland City. The design for all the stations is guided by a single idea, carved earth connected to big sky. The underground stations are designed to feel like they were carved from the earth, using simple materials and dramatic six meter wide circular skylights that connect passengers to the sky above. The stations built above ground are a modern version of a traditional country station, designed to fit in with the natural landscape. Importantly, the design process involved close collaboration with First Nations Darug representatives. Cultural stories unique to each location have been built into the architecture, honoring the country on which the line is built. The line includes six new stations, St. Mary's, which is the vital connection to the existing Sydney train network, Orchard Hills, Luddenham, which is uniquely built 13.5 metres in the air on top of the viaduct, and the three stations at the heart of the new airport city, Airport Business Park, Airport Terminal and Bradfield. And servicing these stations will be some of the most advanced trains in the country. The new line will be serviced by a fleet of 12 brand new, fully automated Siemens Inspiro trains. Because they are completely driverless, these trains are controlled from a high-tech operations centre allowing for fast and frequent services where you can just turn up and go. The system is designed to move up to 7,740 passengers every hour in each direction, with the journey from St. Mary's to the airport terminal taking just 15 minutes. Inside, the trains are custom designed for airport travelers. There are high resolution screens showing real-time flight information fed directly from the airport wide aisles to make room for luggage, and even four dedicated storage spaces for bicycles on every train. Even the seat fabric is unique, featuring a specially commissioned artwork by Darug artist Leanne Redpath that tells the story of country and water on the Cumberland Plain. The blue and grey patterns for the general seats reflect the night sky, while the yellow priority seats tell a daytime story of meeting places near waterholes surrounded by wattle flowers. With all this incredible technology and engineering, it seems like nothing could go wrong. But this project is facing some serious headwinds. This monumental engineering achievement comes with that monumental price tag, $11 billion, paid for by the Australian and New South Wales governments as part of the Western Sydney City deal. But the project is facing a storm of criticism, focused on that critical delay and serious questions about whether anyone will actually use it. The biggest problem is the timeline. While the new Western Sydney International Airport is on track to open in late 2026, the Metro line will not be ready until at least April 2027. For its first six months, Sydney's brand new multi-billion dollar international gateway will be disconnected from the city's rail network, forcing millions of passengers and airport workers onto already congested Western Sydney roads. But an even deeper criticism comes from the nation's independent infrastructure advisor, Infrastructure Australia. In 2021, it delivered a stunning assessment, finding that the project's costs would likely outweigh its benefits by a massive $1.8 billion. The report pointed to alarmingly low ridership forecasts, predicting that in 2026, trains would be running with less than 40% of their seats filled during peak periods. This is a chilling echo of the same miscalculation that doomed Sydney's first airport link two decades earlier. This reveals the project's true nature. It's a massive field of dreams bet. The government's own studies admit that in the early years, demand from the airport alone will be weak. The real justification for the $11 billion investment isn't just to serve the airport. It's to create the economic gravity that will pull the planned 200,000 jobs into the new Aerotropolis. But Infrastructure Australia formally questioned this, stating it was not clear to what extent the Metro line would drive the relocation of businesses and that there was a material risk 
that the Western Parkland City vision will not be realized. The Sydney Metro Western Sydney Airport line is an undeniable triumph of engineering. It has bored nearly 10 kilometers of tunnels deep beneath the city's west, excavating enough earth to fill the Barangaroo cutaway 10 times over, and raised a 3.2 kilometer steel and concrete viaduct that is nearly three times the length of the Sydney Harbour Bridge. Yet, it is a project defined by a powerful question. It is a world-class piece of infrastructure that is, critically, running late for its own opening day. This 23-kilometer line is just stage one of a much grander vision, with future extensions already being planned to push north to Schofields and south to MacArthur and Glenfield, creating a true north-south spine for Western Sydney. The engineering is impressive, but the ultimate question remains unanswered. Will the city grow around this $11 billion railway as planned? Or will it become a monument to ambition that struggles for decades to find its passengers? If you enjoyed this deep dive into one of Australia's biggest mega builds, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the Ultimate Mega Builds channel. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you never miss an update and let us know in the comments what project you want us to cover next.